Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to read from the book of Colossians tonight, if you'd like to read there. And while you're turning, I'll remind you again that Brother Brian, and I appreciate him for driving the bus over there, but Brother Brian is uh, wanting people to be here at 1130 to get loaded up on the bus, and uh, they'll leave as soon as possible concerning that. But uh, please be in prayer concerning this youth rally because there's a lot of things that we're trying to do to help Brother Dwayne. And, and I know it'll be a blessing as well as to, uh, to our young people. We're wanting the Spirit of God to move in a powerful way and uh, help everybody. And I, I wouldn't mind being blessed myself, you know. But just pray that the Lord will help us as we go and I believe that there's others that's driving and, and getting their rooms and so on. And if you um, need information as far as a motel, if you think you might go out there, my wife has information concerning that too. And I think it's on this uh, flyer here. But um, at any rate, be in prayer concerning that. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2 through four is where that I would like to read. And uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking uh, here to this church. And he says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bond that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. And I want to preach tonight on prayer opens doors. Prayer opens doors. I, I, I was preaching in North Carolina, actually, and, and came across this message or came across this scripture in my preaching, and it seemed to just sear into my spirit and soul quite a bit. And uh, I feel as though that this is one of the great keys to revival, one of the great needs of our church to latch hold of. Because, you see, we look at the ministry of the Apostle Paul, and we realize that there were many opportunities that he called open doors. In 1 Corinthians 16, verses 8 and 9, he says, but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. So he's saying, I'm here at Ephesus, and God has opened doors so that I can preach, and the Spirit of God is using me to reach people and touch people here at Ephesus. Then in 2 Corinthians 2 and 12, he said, furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Notice there again, he used that and said, this door was opened at Troas, and uh, that was a great open door, an effectual open door. What he said was at Ephesus. And friends, I believe if we're wanting doors to be opened here at Miller County, we're going to have to pray them open. Amen. The Apostle Paul said in Acts 14 and 27, Amen, and they were given account, rather it says, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Well, how did these doors open? How did it take place? You say, well, it was just God's will back in those days. For God to open the doors and people to get saved and revival to take place. And some, some people say, well, it was just in all reality just kind of a, a thing of history. That's, there's just the right time, the right place. And I'll just be honest. I believe that these doors that the Apostle Paul went through were open because somebody prayed the doors open. Amen. And you say, Brother Lord, what is the secret? Amen. Of us having some opportunities around here to spread the gospel and, and win souls and folks being saved. I, 
I tell you, I believe it's the same right now as it's always been. If there's doors to be open, the church can still pray those closed doors open. Amen. I realize there's some of you that's got family and you say, I just don't know. It seems like they're hard against the gospel. I believe the church can pray the doors open. Amen. Amen. So I understand that sometimes our opportunity may be closed to us. Amen. But the apostle Paul was saying, I need an open door and I know how to get it. It's through prayer. If the church will pray, God will open doors. How many believe that here tonight? Amen. Well, let's just stay in prayer then. Let's do our best to not just be stirred up a little bit here and there to pray. You know, we, we look at some people, and I know someone I've been dealing with for years, and he got stirred up a little while ago, and I told him, I said, listen, there's a scripture that talks about the goodness of some people being like a, a morning cloud and an early dew and it passing away. And I said, don't take conviction for granted. You better act on it while you can. And I trust, and I trust he's still under conviction, but I'll have to admit it's been a while and he has not acted on it just yet. He's promised me he's coming to church and all kinds of things and I'm praying for him. And I trust he's still tenderhearted. But you know, conviction don't just come and stir you up. He, he wants to change you. Well, listen, church, it's the same way with us. God don't want us to just get stirred up and pray every once in a while. Amen. God stirs us to pray because he wants us to pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. He's wanting us to pray and not give up. He's wanting us even here, as Paul said, continue in prayer. That's what he's wanting out of the church. Amen. And if there's going to be some doors open, amen, we're going to have to be knocking on heaven's door. Amen. To him that knocketh, Jesus said, it shall be open. So we're going to have to be knocking on heaven's door to have these doors of opportunity open up to us. I'm wanting souls to be saved, aren't you? Amen. But the only way we're going to have souls saved is for that door to be open, that opportunity to take place, the spirit to be convicting souls and people getting saved and giving their heart to the Lord. And that takes place when the church is knocking on the door of heaven. When that door is always open, I believe it is. Amen. He opens the doors of opportunity for us to win the lost. I understand sometimes the opportunity is not there. And sometimes it's by the will of God. In Acts 16 and 6, verse, uh, chapter 16, verses 6 through 9, the Bible says, Now when they had gone through Phrygia in the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, and after that they came to Mysia, and they essayed to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit suffered them not. That's strange, isn't it? Hey, well, everybody ought to hear the gospel. You're right. But for whatever reason, the Spirit of God knew that these people were not ready to hear the gospel, I guess. That's all I can figure out. But... Bible says in verse 9, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia, and praying him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Amen. Yes, the Spirit of God closed some doors and said, Now, amen, don't go to Europe, don't go to Bithynia, don't go to, or don't go to Asia, rather, but I want to open up the door of Macedonia. That's the place you need to go. Oh, I'd like for the Lord to show us where the doors are open. I have to admit, sometimes uh, I think we try to get through doors uh, that have not been opened by the Spirit of God as of yet. Uh, and when you do it and try to force open a door, it's just not right. 
Amen. Somehow, some way, Asia was closed. Uh, Bithynia was closed. Uh, amen. But Macedonia was wide open. Uh, oh, God, show us uh, where the wide open places are. Uh, oh, God, show us where the families are that are ready to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, 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 I don't believe that we're wasting our time spreading the gospel any time we do it. But I also know that there are some people that are more ready than others. And I realize there are some regions that's more ready than others. And if God had just show us what we need to do at the right time and give us the words that we need to speak, it'd be a wonderful thing. Amen. There are some times, though, that the doors are closed, not because the Spirit of God is leading us, but sometimes uh, they're closed by satanic hindrances. In 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18, the Apostle Paul said, Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. You know what he was, you know, it, this wasn't the Spirit of God forbidding him. This was not the Holy Ghost saying you can't go to the Thessalonica. Somehow, Satan hindered the Apostle Paul from doing what he wanted to do. And we need to pray that spiritual hindrances would be removed so the church can do the work that they need to do for the glory of God. I don't understand that. You just think the Apostle Paul's so powerful anywhere he wanted to go, the devil had just run away. But that's not the way that it's said here, nor stated here. Paul wanted to do something. Evidently, it was God's will, but Satan hindered. We need some praying people, uh, amen, that will wage war with the powers of hell uh, until the devil gets out of the way uh, and we can spread the gospel uh, in a manner that's right. Uh, hallelujah. I'll tell you, there's sometimes we try to reach people. Uh, there's sometimes we try to get folks to come to church uh, and they'll make us promises but I'll tell you the devil hinders them from making it to the house of God he'll put all kinds of things I was witnessing to some people up here in Falk one day and I felt like I was doing pretty good there was at least two of our backsliders and somebody else there and there was there Maybe he still is, but a man in fact that just uh, uh, was quite insane at the time. And I was talking to these fellas. I felt like the Holy Ghost was helping me. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, this fella shows up and just starts babbling, takes over the conversation. And one sentence don't connect to the next sentence, and it doesn't make a bit of sense, and... I have to say, there was such a confusion there, and them young men took the advantage and, you know, to just kind of laugh out, laugh it off and, and so on. I feel like Satan hindered me that day. Amen. That's the way I feel. I feel like Satan hindered me that day because I believe I was doing some good at the time. And I want to tell you, we need to pray that God would bind satanic hindrances that cloud people's minds, that confuse people's minds, and keep people so busy or distracted that they can't get under conviction. And there's sometimes satanic hindrances that come by their own design and desire. They may take drugs and opens, uh, opens themselves up Amen, or numbs them to the Spirit of God. I'll tell you, God can bind the powers of hell and give the church an open door to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know as well as I do, sometimes the hardness of people's hearts. I mean, the whole book of Acts and, and Jesus is preaching as well is all seen that, you know, what if the leaders had a repented? What if the Sanhedrin would have admitted? We don't really have any evidence that would say Jesus is not the Son of God. We've never seen him sin. He's done miracles. We've got more evidence 
to say he is the Son of God than to condemn him for saying he's the Son of God. What if they'd have repented? What if on the day of Pentecost and 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 uh, when after the the lame man was healed and Peter was before the Sanhedrin and the high priest and what if they'd have repented? How many more would have gotten saved? You know as well as I do, people hinder the gospel sometimes from getting out. You just think about the world leaders that's got blood dripping off of their hands that persecuted and hindered the church from getting the message out. And fathers and mothers that hindered their own children from coming to Sunday school. Friends, people hinder as well. They love the world. They love the flesh. Amen. And when there is another message that comes, they will not reject the love of the world. Amen. Or accept the love of God. But I'm telling you right now, we can still pray and those doors that are even closed by people can be wide open and the Spirit of God can override even what men are trying to do to hinder the gospel from getting out in this area. I told you the story, I believe, before that actor that they had making fun of the Bible when uh, the Soviet Union was going on, and he got up on stage, and he would read a certain section of the Bible, amen, and, and make fun of it, and it was a big joke. One night when he went out on stage, he started reading the Bible, and the Holy Ghost got on him. He just kept on reading, just kept on reading. He got under conviction. They never heard anything from him. Evidently got saved, and they shipped him somewhere. He may have even lost his life. I'm just going to tell you, man can try to close the door. But God can bust it wide open however he wants to. Mao Zedong, a man took over China with an atheistic, communistic iron fist. But do you realize that right now, numerically, there are more Christians in China now than there was when, when the communist government took over? Just try to shut a door that God opens. Amen. Just go ahead and try. God will open it so wide that the communist government can't stop it. Amen. God can open doors where there's a... Woo, glory be to Jesus. Uh, hey, man, I know that sometimes it can get discouraging. And you say, well, it seems like the devil's hindering me. And it seems like this person here is trying to stop me. But you know, God can open things up uh, so that you can present the gospel uh, and folks can get saved. Uh, hey, man, secondly, hey, man, I know that there's hindrances. But Paul knew uh, who could open doors. Uh, Paul knew uh, that God uh, can open the closed doors. Uh, Jesus Jesus appeared to, to John on the Isle of Patmos and he spoke to the Philadelphian church and he said unto the angel of the church of Philadelphia right these things saith he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth I know thy works amen behold I have set before thee an open door and I tell God can open a door that no man can shut and he can close things off that no man can do anything about. Hallelujah. And so he said, continue praying. Why? God answers prayer. Now listen, folks, I think the number one objective of prayer is fellowship with God and that will change your life. But I've read some books on prayer that almost made you feel guilty for even expecting that God would answer your prayer. You had to just go to want to be with Him. Well, I think that that's the primary goal. You want to be with God. But I'm just going to tell you, anybody that tells you that God does not want to answer your prayers is not preaching from the Bible. God wants to be with us and fellowship with us in prayer. That's true. And that's the primary purpose of prayer. 
But I'm also going to tell you, God wants to fellowship with us, and he wants to answer our prayers. Amen. And prayer is getting God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. And so what we're trying to do is advance his kingdom, advance his message, advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. And how are you going to do it, brother Lord? We're going to do it by praying until the door comes open. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight for Fairland. I hope you listen to me. Amen. Why do we continue in prayer? Because this old world needs a praying church. You realize how many souls are lost because people don't pray? And you realize how many souls will be saved if we continue to pray? Amen. This world will be a better place if Fairland's a praying church. Amen. Souls will be saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. People will be healed. Miracles will be done. Amen. Because of a praying church. But most of all, God is going to be lifted up. God will be exalted. God will be honored. God will be praised. People will look to God. Hey, man, can I tell you something right now? Hey, man, we can get to apologetics against atheism and, and so on and so forth and etc. But you know one of the greatest arguments against atheism is answered prayer. Yes. Yeah. Woo, glory be to Jesus. Just try to play, pray to a monkey, uh, hey man, uh, on Darwin's little sketch uh, of, of how man evolved uh, and see if you get an answer to prayer. Uh, but kneel and pray uh, to the creator that the Bible talks about uh, and see if something don't happen. Uh, see if lives are not changed. Uh, see if folks are not delivered. Oh, glory be to God. Whoo! I'm telling you, Fairland, I feel like we can pray some doors open around here. You say, well, there's people that's bound by drugs. Uh, there's families that's bound by alcohol. Uh, there's folks that's bound by incest. Uh, amen. And sexual depravity. I understand that. But God can open a door uh, and deliver people uh, from the powers of hell. Uh, that's upon them. Uh, if the church will pray, the door open. Woo. Glory to God. Amen. He said, pray and watch. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> Amen. Some people pray and watch and <laughs> or look at the clock. And <laughs> Has it only been two minutes? <laughs> you know, that's not what he's talking about. <laughs> he's talking about being alert. Now, I think of several things on being alert on that. All right? I think we need to be careful when we enter into the presence of God through prayer. We remember who we're talking to. It'll cause you to be alert when you realize you're standing or kneeling, praying, talking to God changes everything I've told you before one night when I was a teenager I was praying before I went to bed got up to go over the and turn off my light and before I got over there all of a sudden it dawned on me that I was talking to God I didn't think about it I fell on my face it was it was just it was an action that had to happen I was talking to God. I fell on my face. Friend, sometimes I think we need to watch how we approach God in our prayers. He's a God to be respected and revered and honored. Amen. He's not a playmate. Amen. And he's not a big Santa Claus upstairs. Amen. No, he's a holy God. And we need to revere him. And so we need to be alert and pray. We need to stay awake. <laughs> Watch and pray. You know, I don't know why, but sometimes that old spirit of drowsiness will get on you while you're praying. Amen. And, and try to put you to sleep. 
But I, I just tell you, you've got to stir yourself. You may have to walk around. You may have to lift your voice. You may have to do something to get focused. But you've got to stay alert about praying. Amen. The devil will try to distract you, get your mind to wandering. You pray, you pray about Dwayne Bond and think of something funny he did when he was young and get to dreaming about that. And all of a sudden, you're back with Dwayne Bond hauling hay and forget about praying. Amen. I never hauled hay with him. I'm just saying stuff that I have heard people say. You got to be careful. Bring every thought into captivity and be alert. Amen. But also you got to be watchful because the devil hates a praying church. And if you think, uh, amen, the devil would not leave uh, Paul the apostle, a praying man as he is, uh, if he wouldn't leave him alone, uh, he's not going to leave Fairland alone. Uh, And so I'm not telling you to watch in a fearful manner. Uh, I'm just telling you to to watch uh, in a vigilant manner. Uh, And be careful uh, and understand the devil don't like it when you pray. And so you you hate the devil, don't you? If he don't like it, we ought to do it just to spot him just a little bit more out of a love for God and a love for Jesus that saved us and delivered us from our sins. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Amen. Be alert. Watch for an opportunity. Pray and be alert. When that the Spirit of God is moving you a certain way. I understand that there was a certain time, you know, when the sailors would have to wait for high tide as well as a certain wind to be able to get out of their dock. Amen. And there might be a certain sailor where the wind was lulled and he got a little sleepy. He was in dock, and all of a sudden at high tide, the wind picked up, and those sailors that stayed awake was able to move their ships where they needed to go. Hey, those vigilant prayer warriors that can feel the Spirit of God moving can set their sails, put their sails up, and God can take them where they need to go. Amen. While they're praying, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Be alert after we pray. (laughs) I want to ask you, do you ever watch for the answer? Watch and pray. Yeah, pray and then expect something to happen. One young preacher went to Spurgeon and said, said, you know, people get saved every time you preach. He said, I don't understand that. He said, well, he said, don't you expect people to get saved every time you preach? He said, well, no, not really. He said, there's your problem. (laughs) I guess he had a bigger faith than I do sometimes, but I'll just be quite frank with you. I'd like to get that faith that every time I pray, I'm watching. I pray for souls all the time, and I would like to get to praying to where when I come to church, I'm just watching to see who's going to come, who's unexpectedly going to come down those aisles. Hey, man, who's going to come in this place and be more tender than they were the last time? Hey, man, pray and watch for an answer to prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Then he said, be thankful. Amen. There has to be other answers to prayer in order for him to say, be thankful. Now, you know how we are a lot of times in our opening prayer request. We have more, thank God he answered an unspoken request. Thank God he healed so-and-so. Thank God he moved for me and my business. We've got all kinds of things like that happen around here. You know we do. Glory be to his name. And so we ought to thank him. Amen. So there must be other answers, and there must be an expectation for an answer if you're going to be thankful, right? If you're to pray and thank him, sound like an expectation. Now listen to this expectant prayer, okay? In 1540, there was a reformer named Martin Luther. 
He had a great friend and assistant named Frederick Myconis. He became sick and was expected to die within a short time. On his bed, he wrote a loving farewell note to Luther with a trembling hand. Luther received the letter and sent back a reply. Now listen to this. He said, I command thee in the name of God to live because I, have, I still have need of thee in the work of reforming the church. The Lord will never let me hear that thou art dead, but will permit thee to survive me. For this I am praying, this is my will, and may my will be done because I seek only to glorify the name of God. Although Myconius had already lost the ability to speak when Luther's letter arrived, he recovered completely <laughs> and lived two months longer than Martin Luther did. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'll tell you what, that's a pretty bold statement right there. I remember when Curly Mayfield, hey man, was about to die. He's in the hospital, hey man, and, and Brother Lester Moore called and said, can you get the phone down near his ear? Hey man, he said, yes. They got the phone down near his ear and he said, Curly, live in the name of Jesus. I say, live. Hallelujah. You're going to live. And you know what? Curly Mayfield did pull out of that, and he did live many more years after that. Uh, I'm preaching to you, there needs to be a certain thankfulness uh, that has an expectation uh, for the open door, uh, that has an expectation uh, for the healing, uh, that has an... You say, I might be disappointed, Brother Lord. Hey, listen, uh, if we have faith and it's not God's will and we're disappointed, uh, God can comfort us. Uh, I'll tell you, it'd be better to have faith and be disappointed every once in a while when it's not God's will to do what we're asking than it would be to pray without faith and never be disappointed and say, well, I never expected anything to happen. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Well, uh, I appreciate God for blessing me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I might really show out one of these nights if I just didn't feel like there's so many eyes just to watching me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So he prayed. He prayed that I might say it right. How did he, how did he, what did he word it? He said that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. I want to say it right. I want to use the right words. I want to have the correct attitude. Hey, man, I want to preach boldly and have love at the same boldness. Uh, I want to have the correct opportunity. Hey, man, there was a young man applying for a job. <laughs> hey, man, and the fellow interviewing him said, do you have a motto for your life? He said, the same one you have. And the fellow said, what do you mean? He said, I saw it on the door as I came in. He said, what's that? He said, push. <laughs> well, that might be all right in some ways, but I'll just be honest. In my message here tonight, I might, I might get to talking sometime and use that about pushing your way into the presence of God or something. But tonight's message is about him opening the doors. I don't want to push on something he's closed. No, that I will and I do want to step through. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to step through when he opens the door. Oh, I want to be ready. So I'll just be honest. I don't know how y'all have been, but there's been times and I have tried to get people going my way to talk about the Lord and it seemed like I never could get them. And then all of a sudden, I'll be talking to somebody and I'll walk away from them and be driving down the road and I think, there was the perfect opportunity. And I don't know why I'm pushing so hard sometimes and can't get it. 
And then every once in a while the door is wide open and I don't walk through. But I need you all to pray for me that when the door opens, I'll be able to step through it. Amen, because that's what we all need. Amen, we, we need an open door, but we also need to know that it's open. We also, sometimes we can get so polite we hang back here and just, well, is that really open or is that just, amen. We need to pray that God will show us uh, the open door and be able to step through it and do what we need to do for the glory of God. You see, Paul desired an open door. Now, some people, I think, could almost pray, Dear God, please don't let me run into anybody I have to talk to you about today. <laughs> That's not the way Paul was. he get a soldier on a chain next to him. There's going to come a time. God opened the door. Please, Lord, help me to be able to say something to him. Amen. So he's in prison, and all of a sudden, somehow, a guy named Omnisimus is there. And I don't know how it happened, but Paul won him in prison. And, and what, about, what about the Philippian jailer that had treated them so mean and was about to take his life? And he says, do thyself no harm. We are all here. And the man comes in, and there's a wide open door right there. Oh, God shook the prison doors open, but he shook a jailer's door open, his heart open. It came wide open. What must I do to be saved? Oh, God. Listen, I really don't want to be in jail, and I really don't want to have a flat tire, and I really don't want my schedule messed up. But what if my open door is a flat tire? Or my schedule messed up. What if, listen, I don't want to be sick. I don't want you to be sick. But what if you had to go to hospital to talk to a nurse? There's all kinds of needs in this world. And if God had sent his son from heaven to earth to die on a cross so that we could be saved, so a thief could be saved. I'll tell you what, sometimes we may find ourselves in some pretty bad situations but there could be a door open right there hey man who would ever thought that a Philippian jail would be the place that the Philippian church would start but that's where God started it that's where God began it and I'm preaching to you if you want an open door I believe God's got something for our church that we can't hardly imagine hey man yes it's going to be good yes it's going to be wonderful I'll tell you it's going to be powerful but we're going to have to pray until the door opens and then we're going to have to have the understanding to walk through it. Y'all remember those fellas that was outside Samaria? Those leprous men? Is all, he said he wanted to preach the mystery. I'll tell you what. They said, how are we going to survive? They said, if we go in there, they're starving. If we go out here to the enemy... All they can do is kill us. We'll just die both ways. And so they started towards the enemy. And God caused a sound like an army. And the enemy fled. And there they was. It was a hidden thing. But they found it out. God let them discover it. Woo, they was having a good time. They was eating and drinking and hiding stuff. And man, we have got the best treasure. Woo, we're having a great day. They having a... a was it four men? Four lepers men? They was having a four-man party like you never seen. Oh, they was going from tent to tent. Hey, man, from buffet to buffet. Hey, man, hiding stuff, enjoying themselves. And oh, how glorious it was. And then all of a sudden, one of them, you know, said, you know, we're having a good time, but... There's some starving people. One said to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. I'm afraid that we need to wake up. We're having a good time shouting and glorifying God, but I'll tell you, it's, this is a day of good tidings. 
This is a day we need to tell some others. It's a mystery. It's something that's hidden. Hey, man, it was hidden from us for a while. And, and oh, how great it is to banquet at God's banquet table. I'll tell you, there's a lot of starving families out there that need what we have right in here. We need to pray with a door to open. Hallelujah. He was in a chain. Paul was in a chain. And he even admitted it right there. But he still had a desire that was bigger than the bondage. Some people would have gave up and said, I'll never do anything. I've got a chain on my arm. I'm in bondage. I'm in prison. I'm in a dungeon. I can't do anything for God. Let me tell you something. Paul didn't give up. Hey, man, and he wrote letters that we're still hearing from God about here tonight. And I tell you, the devil may tell you about your chain, but you have a desire to do something for the Lord. I'm telling you, God can open up a door for you he wanted these people to join in his labor in 2 Corinthians 1 and 11 he says ye also helping together by prayer for us you want to help the work of God pray you can't do anything better for somebody than to pray for them Charles Finney told a story about a pastor who had a remarkable spiritual success for 12 years every Sunday somebody was praying and getting saved for 12 years Woo! I'd love that 12 years one day while he was visiting one of the elder men in his church he, he began to find out one of the reasons may have been the main reason he found out that this man spent his Saturday evening praying for his pastor's Sunday morning service, praying for that message that the man of God was going to deliver on Sunday morning. He'd pray Sunday evening. I don't know when he started, but he ended at midnight for years and years and years. And the preacher understood why people were getting saved, why there was an open door, why there was a liberty to preach. Hey, there had been times. I remember one time in particular. I do not know what was going on at that particular camp meeting, but something was hindering that camp meeting. My wife probably can know, knows. What, I'm telling you, you know, I usually try out messages here, and I preach whatever I feel, whether they go over or not. But this message I preached, I have to admit, is a number of years ago. I was preaching, and I didn't even make it through the message. People started shouting right here on a Sunday morning while I was preaching. Y'all don't remember that one, do you? It did happen, I assure you. I thought, well, I'll take this message. I'll preach it over there. Buddy, I'm telling you what. I got to preaching, and I think I would have felt the Lord if I was preaching all by myself a little bit better. It's one thing I have. I do like to preach sometimes by myself and get to expound in the Word of God. Sometimes it's better that way than it is in church. Amen. You may not believe me, but it is. I get anointed, praying it before the Lord. But at any rate, amen, it was as dead as it could be. I thought, this is campy. I got to calling some people. I said, I don't know what's going on here. But I need, we need God to loose this thing up. We need an open door. We need some freedom. Amen. And I can't remember what night it broke, but before that camp meeting was done, that church was a different church. Amen. We was having different altar services. The power of God was moving. You know why? It wasn't, wasn't my preaching. I believed that there was somebody behind the scenes praying till the door came open. Hallelujah. We work together, don't we? Could we all stand? Oh, I believe it's God's will for doors to open for Fairland where we can win souls. Amen. Where the, whatever it be, at the prison or the... And I, I, at the nursing home or whatever it is, God wants us to win souls. Hallelujah. Could you raise your hands 
and thank him. Oh, God, I praise you. I worship you, dear God. I magnify you. I give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Lord, I believe you're wanting to open doors for Fairland. I believe you're wanting to win souls through this church. Oh, God, we've got families that's lost. Open doors where we can win them. There's people in this community we don't even know that you're dealing with. Open doors where we can meet them and talk to them and give them to Jesus Christ. God, I pray you'd slam the door in Satan's face. God, I pray you'd remove satanic hindrances and, and even the hindrances that sometimes people give. I pray that you would block that so the gospel can go forth. God, bless and move and help us to pray until the door comes open. In the name of Jesus, oh, glory, glory. I'd like for us as a church to come around these altars and let's pray that God had opened doors where where the revival that God has promised us would take place and sinners would be saved and folks would be changed and delivered and set free. Oh, yes. Glory to God.